We're Marianne and Chris, and we've been traveling full-time since 2018. We're currently spending a few weeks in the country of Georgia. A country with fantastic mountain views, crazy roads, and even crazier driving. You can't see, what is that? And let's not forget unusual architecture, delicious food, and cows on the road. <coughs> After our wonderful walk around the fortress and spending the afternoon editing and catching up on a few bits, we slept here again last night. In fact, it was a bit of a crazy night's sleep. The dogs kind of kept us awake. Oh, don't be so mean. That's one of them. The cat tried to get in the van at about five o'clock this morning through the roof hatch and there was meowing. So Marianne got up and fed it at five o'clock this morning. So we're feeling slightly sleep deprived this morning. But this morning we're excited because we are heading to a very cool monastery. It's so much more than a monastery and uh, we can't wait to show it. It's about 25 minutes from here. So let's hit the road. Oh, it's a lovely road here going through this valley along the uh, the mountains we're nearly there but I just wanted to share this with you look at that in fact it's roads like this that when I get questions saying where do you want to live where do you want to settle down this is why I don't want to settle down this is why I want to live in a van because that is extraordinary exactly Variety is the spice of life. Yeah, baby. <laughs> Not that sort of variety. <laughs> coming into Vardzia and you can see the uh, monastery in the cliff face there. So we have arrived at the Vardzia cave monastery. You can see it in the cliffside behind us. It's located in the southern central region of Georgia and is just over four hours drive from Tbilisi. We're all ready to go. <laughs> 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 Got ya. But before we do, we want to say a huge thank you to Surfshark for sponsoring today's video. We've been using Surfshark VPN for the past few years, way before they started sponsoring us, and I would not hesitate to recommend them. But first, what is a VPN? VPN stands for Virtual Private Network. Basically, it creates an encrypted tunnel which keeps you safe while you're surfing online. There are so many benefits to using Surfshark. Firstly, it allows you to browse privately so nobody can track or steal your data. It hides your location, blocks ads and malware, keeps you safe while you're using public Wi-Fi, and keeps all your searches private. We love the fact that by simply changing your virtual location, it puts you somewhere else in the world. If only driving around the world were that easy. And that allows you to unlock content that wouldn't normally be available to you. What's more, if there's more than one of you in your household, Surfshark VPN is the only VPN company that allows use on an unlimited number of devices. To get started, simply click the link in the description below, use the code TREADTHEGLOBE, and you get a whopping 83% discount and three months free. Back to the show. I actually bought a pair of hiking boots when we were in Turkey, but they're a little bit uncomfortable. They're not fully worn in yet. So I'm afraid I've got the sandals and socks scenario going on today. I'm very ashamed to say that. I think it's probably the first time I've ever done it. Don't be ashamed, you are setting trends. <laughs> they're comfortable anyway. So I just asked Marianne whether she's got her mask because a lot of it is indoors today. I'm color coordinated. <laughs> Green mask, green top. We are both trend setting today. <laughs> There's a fashion thing going on right there. And if the fashion police are watching, leave now. <laughs> so at the bottom, they've uh, got a little restaurant and some little shops here. Uh, fresh juice, there you go, look. Ticket office. So this is the entrance here. So the monastery opens at 10 a.m. every morning, all year. 
But the, the uh, closing time varies depending on the season. I'm good, how are you? <laughs> Did we see you? Yeah, yeah. it's you the same you guy. <laughs> this is the same oh, guy who was at the fortress yesterday. <laughs> Uh, two tickets, yes? Yes, please. Thank you. They operate a one-way system. Because it's um, a maze of tunnels and rooms, mm -hmm. you have to follow the flow. Otherwise, in busy high season, it would get very hectic. So it's not about COVID, it's about getting lost. Yes. And I get lost anyway. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> wow. I did see online that it, they recommend taking these things up the hill to save your legs. There's nobody in it, otherwise maybe I would consider it, but we need the exercise this morning, we've just got up. But I need to save my legs. <laughs> and that's where we're going. It's a huge complex of man-made caves. In fact, it would be an underground cave city. It was inhabited from the Bronze Age and it was a defensive tunnel system from between the 11th to the 13th centuries. We're looking around this massive structure and I'm noticing as we're walking towards it, in the rock, there's like channels that look like they've been worn away over time. And I said to Chris, maybe this is where the water would have come out, maybe the toilets or the washing water or a river. Maybe, yeah, it came off the mountains and that's where it would have washed. Originally, back in the day, if you'd stood here and looked at this cliff face, you wouldn't have seen all these holes. This is a result of a big earthquake years ago. Some of the mountainside slipped away, revealing what was inside. I can see the golf cart coming up. If I'd known that, we would have got a lift. <laughs> You can see how big this dwelling was because there's rooms in the cliffs all the way, all the way along as far as the eye can see. It's an absolutely massive structure and complex. Mind blowing. Talking about erosion, Marianne was right. Water reservoir. These uh, structures here were for water. So we've nearly climbed to the top. You can see little Trudy, our van, yeah. parked down at the bottom there. It was a good bit of exercise this morning. It's a lovely walk. It's um, very steep, but the, the pathway is actually really easy to, to navigate. There's no rocks or steps. It's just sort of like a nice smooth pathway. And one thing is I'm glad it's not too sunny today. We woke up this morning and saw that it was a cloudy day and thought, oh, it's cloudy. But yeah. actually, you know, I'm pretty pleased that it's not full blaring sun whilst we're walking up this hill today. It's going to be impossible to pick up on the camera but we can hear so many birds. It seems like this place is an absolute refuge for birds. And in the distance, we can even hear birds of prey. Back in its heyday, this place had 6,000 different rooms on 19 levels. Today, there is 641 different separate chambers, over 13 levels with tunnels. Some of them are over 200 meters long. I don't think we're gonna be able to show you every single room today but we're gonna give it a good shot and show you as much as we can. Here's the first room. 
Wow, it's huge. Absolutely nuts. This must be the highest, I mean, like the tallest level. I don't know. I think so. But this would have all been covered and you wouldn't have had this magnificent view. But it's huge with tunnels absolutely everywhere. Different rooms. It's hard to imagine that these were all carved out by man thousands of years ago and that people lived in here. What a crazy thought. In fact, this place would have got some light from there, which would have had a little window in the side of the rock face, I'm assuming, that would have brought some light in. I would assume, actually, I would assume these are all escape tunnels. Yeah. From under attack, so they can yeah. jump off into little rooms. And the black on the ceiling would have been where the kitchen areas were. Yeah. And guess what? I reckon Marianne's gonna tell you. What's that, love? I think it might have been wine. I can live in caves. We just saw this very cool looking walkway down on the, uh, the side of the hill here. And it's blocked off, you can't get to it. But we've just figured out there's tunnels everywhere. And I think further along the line, we're going to pop out on one of these levels down below. Wow, we've just walked through to the other side and this view is breathtaking. Look at these tunnels, walkways, on the edge of this cliff here looking down. Absolutely stunning. or the monastery because I can smell that incense. Okay, back down this way. Okay. So we've come to this walkway, um, just to give you a perspective, it's actually almost vertically down. It really is. Marianne's there. And then it's down there. Marianne's sitting on a white rock I, with I've, black trousers. Chris has got black trousers, but he's going down on his backside because this is absolutely crazy. I'm going to treat it like a boat and go the other way. I think that's a great idea. Go on in. Slowly. <laughs> I'm a mountain goat. Mountain goat. Well, we're definitely getting the steps in today. Oh my lord, what a oh crazy goodness. walkway. This is nuts. And then look, we're on the edge there, slowly working our way down. You can see all the tunnels and things, and we're going down that way. Your legs aching yet? <laughs> no, because I'm so scared of the heights and blown away by the beauty. It's such a mind blowing can't experience. Can't think about my legs yet. Okay, let's go down a bit more. Oh, 
We hope you enjoyed this episode. Wasn't that just the most amazing place? You're not gonna wanna miss the next episode where we try to leave Georgia to head back into Turkey. But as with all van life, sometimes things just don't go according to plan. Make sure you click the subscribe button and the thumbs up so you don't miss the next episode. Bye.